Um, in 2016, I have a list here of our contacts. We do keep, in, um, keep track of that through calendars. So we had um, seven field trips. Um, we had 56 local radio interviews for non-emergency purposes. Um, these were primarily the chairman and I doing our regular rotation. We had out 18 out-of-market interviews. Um, they were mostly for emergency response purposes, but we also had several out-of-market interviews during the rewrite of the Animal Services Ordinance. Um, we hosted um, the three leadership groups that you see listed there. In addition to that, we had 112 local television, radio, print, for emergency and non-emergency purposes um, interviews. We also did awareness events for spay neuter pet adoption and use microchip and fire prevention and issue football and we're regularly maintaining the website. Um, we also through the contract that you all approved for the unlimited access that um, actually was able to negotiate a lower rate for us for K-RED. That has been a tremendous help. Um, the flexibility of that system is ridiculous now. It used to be when we started with Cater in 2009, I think it was, the only option that we had was to launch a call that we had to record to the entire county. It was either you recorded and launched a call to everybody or you didn't. And it cost more then to do that than it does now for us to have the flexibility of people being able to get alarms and watches directly from the National Weather Service. Or um, we have it built where once the address is in the system, if we were to have a chemical spill, or a, um, a train derailment or some sort of emergency that only affects a particular area of the community and we need to get that out right away, then he can go in and, and draw a perimeter around that location on the map and it will only launch calls to the addresses that are inside that perimeter. So that's helpful as well, especially if maybe we need to let the entire county know, but these people need to know right now really bad so you could just hit them first and then launch it to the whole county. And then there's those calls that call out to be a priority. So we've been able to expand that to um, let people know um, where we work with the hydrant flushing schedule, which if anyone's ever gotten any calls when the fire department was flushing hydrants and doing those tests, sometimes you know people get a little upset. If their washing machine's not filling as fast as it normally does. Um, or um, we've had some, some water outages and we've been able to let people know right away that yes, we knew the water was out and yes, this is when we thought that we were going to have it. So that's been um, great. I think that what we have seen though the biggest um, return on no investment other than my time has been the emergency management Facebook page. And I know that you know over the years I've seen us go from traditional face-to-face -face interviews and press releases to evolving in kind of of what today is, and that does depend heavily on social media. Um, people are using traditional media sites as well as social media um, to get their information. And I see a difference in reporters, whereas they used to really prefer, you know, a traditional, maybe even longer, very detailed press release. Now they just want to know what you have going on and when, and they want to be able to take that event and choose the direction that they want with that information as far as the details that they prefer versus what you put out there. So there's a balance between, yes, providing that traditional release and making sure that all of the who, what, when, where, and why is out there. Um, but then they also have a greater need um, for additional information for that. So again, I'm going to go down my list and then you input there. I think the chairman might have something to say on this as well. Um, for 2017, um, we want to go ahead and maintain our current efforts and, and do the things that we've been doing as it relates to public education and working with our media. Um, we would also, though, like to provide a couple of public workshops to let citizens know about board appointments. You know, we sometimes have a hard time finding candidates and people who have time to do that. And then, oddly enough, the times that there's really not a lot of seats available, we'll start to get some interest from folks. And sometimes by the time you get back around to seats being available, you know, they found some other way to volunteer their time and they're not interested anymore. Or, you know, people just see the list of um, the appointments and the boards and maybe a brief description on our websites, but they don't actually understand what's involved time-wise or, um, or what that board or agency or commission actually does. So we'd like to get, you know, the staff members who work with these um, agencies and boards and commissions involved and have some workshops. I mean, you all um, certainly can be a part of that as well. 
for people who are interested and want to learn more about what those things do. Um, also, we would like to do a digital um, annual report that um, presents additional service information and maybe some photographs of projects as it relates to our audit. I think that when we heard the audit report yesterday, that was extremely powerful in the management of the taxpayers' dollars and their resources. We want to be able to put something out there that in the average citizen's perspective and terms explains to them exactly what um, their investment is and what you all are doing to return that to them and how those services work. Um, I think you know some of the FAQs that we get are, you know, how do I get my road paid? And people may not understand this probably about this and the funds that are primarily used for that. Well, it's one thing to tell them, but whenever you can take information about audit and information from Mike and say, these are the actual dollars, say that you know, there's a greater level of transparency there, I think that that's really important. Um, also, um, utilization of constant contact. If any of you don't know what that is, it's sort of an email database that you build with people who are just interested in receiving those messages, and it is the, a fraction of the time that the old school version and way of putting an actual newsletter together would have been. So this is something that if we're going to have a ribbon cutting or if we have a program going on or just an awareness, something. Um, or if you all had something that was district specific to a project in your district that we could um, put that information out. And I think that constant contact for up to 10,000 email addresses is I think $84 a month. So it's Certainly, you're reaching all of those people as many times a year as you would like for significantly less than mailing out a newsletter. The last time we mailed out a newsletter with postage and printing, it was over $30,000 to mail it to all of the address points in the county. Well, and as an example of this case that Chairman referred to earlier, we followed up with this on something there. Granted, it wasn't a four-year or so um, um, mail out, but we sent a letter that said, you know, But we had that information and it had to be mail merged anyway, so we could have just imported that into constant contacts and just shot, shot that out. Now, some people still like to look at a paper copy of it, but we could have used constant contact or something like that. If we have their email addresses. Well, yeah. Let me ask you, let me ask this question. Along those lines, uh, and I, know I, 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 I think you can do this because I think I've received some of the call up. Just like you have the code red system, that's available now. Is there a process or, or technology to where citizens can provide either an email and or a phone number if they choose along those lines that if we wanted to send out a, 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 just a quick message, it can be done by through text rather than a phone call or a phone ringing. But I don't mean to take anything away from code ready, but I think it is a huge, huge asset. Um, but you know, when, you're, when a storm is coming through and there's an issue coming through and there's a lot of concerns, you're getting along with a lot of phone calls. And I'm not sure everybody, we, we're all in meetings or we and students are in classes and there's a lot of different things going on. Rule changers, you have the option. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. It's not a problem for me. But what I'm getting at though is that if, we, if we're looking at a better way or other ways that we can communicate with the citizens of, of Lowndes County, I'm not sure that we want to add another ring to their phone to where if we could do it through the process of, as we say, constant contact or just a text goes out, uh, you know, just announcing in an event or something like that, and boom, it just pops up as a text or pops up as an email. Because you do, you do emails through email addresses, but you do texts through phone numbers. Is that correct? So, you know, to try to marry them two together, to where you can get that information uh, and you can receive it anytime, whether you're sitting in a meeting, as we all do, we've all looked at our phone at some time or another, we've looked at our text and email, but yet we haven't been interrupted by the ringing of a cell phone. So I think that there's some more technology out there or that, that we can better communicate with the citizens and not only communicate with them, but, but also help to create better communication from them. The more we communicate with them, then the more communication we're going to get back. Certainly, in my opinion, on the text, a text needs to go out with no reply. In other words, you can't, you don't want to be sitting here reading through 
3,000 text, you know, where people are saying, what about this? You're just doing it as an announcement. It goes out there. There's no reply that you can do. But it put them and showed up on people that want to be connected. Showed up. Um, what I have asked for, and we have, this has been an ongoing process, and again, staff has done just a fabulous job to bring us from where I thought that we were to where we're at today from the standpoint of trying to communicate with the citizens, uh, whether it be through the, web, the new website that you designed it, whether it be through, um, I mean, even Code Red, and whether it's, whether it's through Facebook, all of those tools are being utilized more and more and more to try to get the citizens of this community involved in this process. I feel like it would be a tool for me as well is that um, through that through that process, we can get those citizens to be involved a little bit more. If not a little bit more involved, at least a little more informed yeah, about what's going on. At least they're, at least they're informed. You, that you won't get into a situation where it's, well, I didn't know anything about that. You give them, and you're still going to have them, but ultimately you give everybody an opportunity to know that there's something that's coming up, there's a decision being made, whatever that case is, it, it helps them be more involved. And I think the more that we can do that, I think at the end of the day, you'll find um, that the opinion of the citizens and how local governments uh, are serving their needs and looking towards their needs, I think that you'll, you'll find the opinion of local government really from that standpoint, even brought it out. But specifically, all I'm concerned about is local government. The opinion of the government will begin to change the more people are aware of what's going on. Um, this society we live in right now today is about as anti-governmental as they call it ever. Um, and I would like to see us begin to move, and I say it again, that's a bad one, but we already have a government to do a much better job of that. But I think that we still have a lot of a lot of growth in that area. And I think the more of the citizens that we can keep informed and the better off we as commissioners and certainly the tools that the staff has got to respond to the needs of the citizens is going to be, we will be ahead of the curve a little bit. If we can do more. <laughs> and I will say that to prove your point that through the MA Facebook page and through the code red notifications, I mean I have received wonderful feedback from people saying, you know, through these storm events and through that Facebook page, I mean, I have seen that change. Absolutely. That, you know, so, couldn't agree more. So that really is what the effort in all of this is, is, is uh, more, more uh, a better informed uh, citizenry, and I would like to see us to, to begin to develop better ways of doing it. Now, what does that also bring out? It does also bring out the fact, again, my opinion, we as Lowndes County and we as commissioners, we still have a lot of room to grow to be able to, to bring Lowndes County out into the sunshine. Let the sunshine on uh, we haven't done a real, real good job on that. I mean, you know, when I mean that, I mean I'm not talking about I'm not talking about necessarily transparency sunshine project. I'm talking about the fact that let's talk about Lamps County a little bit. Let's shine the light on Lamps County. Let's let the citizens know what's going on in this community. And let's put Lamps County out front. So that not only folks in Lowndes County, but folks in this whole region and in this whole state knows where Lowndes County is at and what's going on in Lowndes County. And you can only do that today through the tools of social media, communicating with the public out there in every effort that you can do. If you just sit here and kind of expect people to communicate with you, you're going to get a very limited number of people that's going to communicate. And it's always going to be the people that have a grievance not the ones that wants to look at your community and say good positive things. So we can do a better job <coughs> by shining the light on the Lowndes County and say, hey, look what is here in South Georgia and what moving to South Georgia, whether you're bringing your industry or you're moving your family there, this is what we have to offer in Lowndes County. 
So if we can continue to grow on that, again, that is economic development. That's just what it is. The day and age that we live in today, everybody is the first thing that they want, they want to do. If a military person at Moody gets ready to come to Moody Air Force Base, the first thing they go to is Lowndes County, Valdosta, and they want to try to find out as much as they can. I'll be honest with you, they find out a lot more about some of the other entities in this community rather than they do Lowndes County. I want to push Lowndes County out into the sunlight and let these people know what we have to offer as local government in the unincorporated areas. Whatever it might be, what we're doing. And I think it's a great opportunity that we have to begin that process to get there. Is there a model to go by? Do we know the city or county is deep into this? Well, we have, um, over the years, the, the commission's perspective as a whole on this changes. It, you know, we've had the, the characteristics of some commissioners or commissioned as a whole in the past has been um, a lower profile. And then we've had other commissions over the years that have been, like you all, a higher profile. So we have all of those tools in our box already as far as doing some of those things. And then, you know, we pull them out based on what you all want. So we have a lot of things that we have done in the past that we don't do and that we can continue to um, to highlight and do. Um, if you look at the last page, um, you will see there is a list of things that are related to our local services that, um, that the county provides annual funds if you all don't directly oversee them. And these are the list of the things that we ask our departments for to say, you know, what can we do to celebrate and to bring, you know, to highlight the services that you all provide. So there's a list here. I, I will say though, and, and the chairman and, and Commissioner Ornstein and I have all talked about this already, is that, you know, if you all want to do these things and we spend the time to put the recognition together, you all, you know, people, it's not that people don't appreciate us and that they don't enjoy seeing us, but do they really want to see and hear from about services and things or you all? So it doesn't do us a lot of good to do a lot as far as like the staff goes and us be there if you all aren't available to be there because the citizens really, they voted for you, they elected you, you're their leadership, and so they want to see you as a part of these things too. I couldn't support that anymore, and I came up short with my statement earlier about it. That's what the, result, the end result is going to be, is that to do it and do it like it should be, it's going to really require more time on the commissioners. You're going to have situations that, that if there's an event or something going on, you probably need to be there. You need to seriously consider that whatever that district is you're representing, do you need to be there? Now, a lot of you already do that. Most all of you already do that. Um, but I just feel like that, again, it's going to be important as Paige is saying, is that they're going to want to hear some of this stuff from those people that represent them. I think that that's really important. They didn't know exactly who you are. Um, and I, personally, for me, I have no problem. Um, you know, I try to do as much of it as I can, uh, but in all honesty, I, I do have to turn some down and just say, I'm sorry, I just can't do this, I can't go with that. Now, reality is, is that you all, we also have to be realistic, you know, and, and, and I'll say this, in some cases, we have to be careful that we don't get into a situation that just because you're there to support somebody doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to, that, that they can expect financially the local government is also going to support them. So it's a fine line that you have to work with, but it, it's not our job as a local government to support to support financially different different civic groups and different things. There are some functions that I think we've identified in the past, such as just last night, that is a huge benefit for us, and that was the law enforcement uh, appreciation there. That is something that we need to support. There's a few other things there that is the group that we need to support. But it needs to be those type of things. But the reality is, is that there may be things in your district or groups in your district that you want to be a part of, that you need to go and be involved in. Uh, it could be something very simple, or it could be just as in depth as you want to get. But, it, but to really do it and do it right, that's what it's going to involve. The, the, the 
it's all going to involve. It's going to involve more citizenry engagement with the commissioners and the citizens. It, it, I mean, terminology, you know, and I live in the city of Lexington. Most of you all do too. The fact is, some of us wouldn't be in the city if we weren't for the city residents. I think it'd be good for them to have an even better presence in some of the city functions because I say I can't speak for everybody. I, I can just tell you that there's a lot of public events that do take place, and you know I know everybody came in here. Everybody got their own schedule or what have you, but you know, a lot well, of times you, you're there by yourself. And I agree with you. You know, I, I agree with you. Sometimes I go to things that's in the city that I haven't been invited to. You know, Ms. Evans does the same thing. I'll give you an example on that. I went to the tree, the two of the tree plantings for the Arbor Day celebration this week. Because, not because it was somebody else's party, you might say, but because I felt strongly that it was that I, I needed to be there to let those first responders know that the county commissioner supports them as well. To let those folks at Moody know that the county commission supports them as well. It was a city function and I told the city folks they wanted me to speak at the one when we planted the tree for the first responders. I did that. They invited me in to do that. But I said, the guy, wait a minute. If this is your event and this is your party. I'm not asking to be invited in. I'm here to, I'll stand over here and support the first responder. That's why I'm here. But they did. They asked me to come in and say a few words for the first responders. And, and I did that. And the same thing with the Moody Tree planting. So those are the sort of things that, the Marks, I agree with you 100% that, and we've done, we've talked about this a lot, but you commissioners represent 100% of the citizens in Lance County, not just the citizens in the municipalities, nor just the citizens in the unincorporated area. So you have a certain obligation, in my sense, to try and represent those people. Do you represent them? You can't represent them by the show of a hand in the municipality because that's done by their local county uh, city council members. But what you can do is show your support that Lambs County may support whatever that effort is that they're currently working on, whether it be the city function or whether it be, uh, you know, a, a city group or something. But I just feel real strong that, it, that, it, that it's good for the commissioners and good for the community that the more that we can work with these, work with the citizenry, then the more of the sunshine, you might say, is going to shine on Lambs County. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's, that's part of what you're doing. You're not doing it specifically for that reason. But it is a positive thing for the commission. It's a positive thing for the staff. And I think it's something that we all need, need to try to do a better job than what we're doing for the ones that are doing a great job with it and then the ones that, that aren't, they need to try to improve and do a better job. Can you be 100% and go to 100% of everything? Absolutely not. I recently went to the city council meeting on that Georgia Park on Georgia Avenue, and uh, that's in my district. Mm -hmm. and I got a good response from people just by being there. Just on that, I just said, I was to the same thing. If I was there, they, they recognized the fact that we cared, the county cared about that situation. Right. <clears throat> I, mean, I had issues with that same one. I had a, a lady that there again, she lives in the city of Valdosta, but she also lives in Lowndes County. She called me as the chairman to talk about it. I gave her what information I thought that she needed, the path that maybe they needed to go down, and how they needed to address that issue. And then at the same time, she said, well, will you come and speak in our behalf? I said, no, ma'am. I, I can't do that. I have to draw the line at a particular point, but, you know, I'll help you any way I can and support but I can't come and speak in your behalf. So th that's where I, I you, you have to make those decisions about where that separation is. But reality is, is that, uh, you know, this gets me in some squeezes sometimes, but I am 100% of the fact that we represent 100% of the citizens in this community. Well, I had, we don't represent just the ones that in the I had eight, 10, maybe 12 people 
about that, Donald. Just say, I'm so glad to see you there on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot to I'll finish my list real quick, Chairman. Okay. If that's okay, so we can get on to the last thing. Um, some of the heavier part of this list is at the bottom. Um, we work with um, this, the Children's Advocacy Center, which you all know I want to work with, um, have, uh, was a big factor of a program that we're empowered with us. They have an employee committee that is volunteer, volunteer programs that their employees um, participate in that is really about doing small works of community service. Um, what they did on the Martin Luther King holiday that morning, they had 10 or 15 employees that came out and they cleaned the yards of the Children's Advocacy Center because right now we don't have a person to do that. Um, but it's an opportunity for their employees to get out into the community and to work together from a team building standpoint with some of their leadership um, to do some good that the community sees that benefits the community and for them to work together outside of work, so to speak. So um, I have spoken with Jason mainly about that program and they have actually offered to let us partner with them on the event just to see you know, what kind of interest we would have from our employees and to see how their program works and I'm excited about being a part of that. Also, um, the establishment of a citizen appreciation program. Commissioner um, Evans and I have spoken some about this, but I think that we have a lot of citizens who are doing significant things in our community that really deserve, however often and, and with whatever framework you all would like to do, um, to be you know, invited to a commission meeting and they can get a certificate and let you all talk a little bit about what they did and why it's important to our community. If you really look at what works, um, it's those, those citizen programs that are filling the gaps between what government can't provide. Um, again, I think that, that the CAC is a great example of that. If you didn't have a nonprofit providing those forensic interviews and the support that the district attorney's office needs, to be able to get those child abuse cases through the court system, then the DA would have to hire employees and staff and, and pay for those forensics and do that themselves. So because of the CAC, you have a function of what could have to be a court function that's being done by private citizens through fundraising. So those types of things, you know, we have young people in our community that do fantastic things and we have them in to sometimes do the indication and um, the pledge, but I think sometimes there's some additional recognition that so we can talk about more of that in the budget process. And then last real quick, um, we did identify through the storms and the severe weather that we have had after the tornadoes unfortunately hit um, the counties around us that um, we have some young citizens in our community that maybe were not so afraid of thunder and lightning and things like that before, that after they saw the evidence of the fatalities, they've seen pictures of all that destruction, the next thunderstorms that came along, they were terrified. Um, so Ashley Ty and I have gotten together on this and spoken with um, one of the meteorologists at the National Weather Service and, and another one at the local TV station to see if they would be willing to come in and bring their storm trucks and the kids could see the technology and have us do kind of a version of a baby storm spotter class for kids so that if we got them interested in the science of weather, why is it thunder, why is it lightning, why is it raining, that maybe whenever those things came along, they would be more interested in what was happening weather-wise than they would be to be scared of the weather. Um, and last night when we were at the Leeds dinner, I spoke to um, a friend of mine who was also an elected official in Cook County and said, you know, if we do this a couple of rounds here and it goes well, you know, if you'd like, we can see if those folks would like to come to Cook County and do it for your residents there as well because I'm sure that they're significantly more impacted than we are. So that's kind of the
lost at that time was a little prohibitive, but um, uh, we'll go back and look at that and bring it up as a budget issue. Well, you know, what I was going to say, my response would be, again, using some of the tools that we already have, could we not, is there possibly on the on website or on, even on, well, on the website to where there would be a button that they could click and write in whatever that need is, wash out on the so and so and so and so and so and so. We have a city developer here, I don't know for that, they the mm -hmm. 311 the city mayor is there to offer some technology that they've done. We have that API now on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. so
as far as that exchange goes. I'm not talking about interaction. I'm talking about just, just promoting the good things that we're doing in every form and fashion and using every piece of technology that we can. You can, people can still, the setting that you can use is people can still um, comment, but everyone can't see those comments. And only the administrator, only whoever's maintained that page can see the comments.